Sun's shining. It's nice out. Swear to God, if it snows one more time, I'm going to flip and lose it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101 out here on a nice day. Hopefully it's going to stay that way. And I had an idea for a video. Surprised I haven't done this sooner. It's going to answer a burning question. You see, us YouTubers that uh, test and review knives, depending on how long we've been around, you've seen us test and recommend hundreds of knives. Obviously, we can't continue to use all of them. We try to be fair and uh, scientific and just illustrate the pros and cons so that people over a wide swath can, with infinite amounts of uh, preferences and, and things that they need, get the information that they want. So even though they may pass our tests, even though we may think that they're going to work for everybody, obviously we don't keep them all. So, what knives do I still have? Which are the knives that I like so much that I decided to keep them? That I every so often switch them out and continue to use? Because conspiracy theories aside, we're not raking in buckets of cash from all these different uh, knife makers and companies to review this stuff. So one way that we continue to do what we do is to trade items and sell items uh, after we buy them, use them, test them, whatever. Because there's always somebody out there that can use a deal and it's better that they have it than sitting on my garage wall. I have less knives than you would probably think. What we're going to look at today is what fixed blades do I still have? And these are specifically more tuned toward the wilderness side. So I'm not going to be addressing anything like, you know, my uh, Wink knife, which is a fixed blade, but this is more of like an urban EDC thing. So these are going to be like the woods knives. So if you want to find out what I still got, don't go away. All right, the first one is so ridiculously obvious. I honestly thought about leaving it out, but because it is what I use 90% of the time, I'm gonna put it in there anyway. And that's my knife. I've got about six of them. And that's pretty much just so I can give them away on occasion to friends. I'm still using the same one. But you've heard about this knife before, so let's move on. You know what? Let's not move on. Like I said, I've got six of them. I haven't given one away out of my personal stock. Now that I have a fair way to do it, I'm gonna give away a Jessica X. So, all you gotta do is comment in this video. I'll select somebody next week. You'll get a Jessica X out of my personal stash. But I got other cool knives here, so let's see what else there are. Now you might find this surprising, but I've only got four knives right now in the category of large knife. That says a lot. That's how much stuff I actually get rid of. But this is another one that I just can't let go of that I bought myself. That is EJ Snyder's XX, ah, God dang it, SXB. The hardest thing in the world to say. Of course, I consider EJ a friend. He's got my knife, I got his knife. It's just a big crazy knife. So I'm never gonna get rid of this one. It's a fun one. It's a bit on the excessive side, but I got no problem with excessive. Excessive works for me. This next knife is one of my most prized possessions and it's somewhat of an infamous knife, at least to its creator, because this is what he considers to be the exact knife that launched his career. And that is my Dark Timber Grizzly. Now the new Grizzlies, because he got so good so quick, look even sicker than this thing. But 
I mean, come on, this is a Pete Kohler custom hand forged knife, pretty much one of a kind. It's freaking awesome. Dark Timbers are so sought after, so hard to get. The waiting list is so long. He pretty much is forging nonstop. But yeah, that is definitely a big one. This next one has not been around for quite some time. You're probably wondering whatever happened to her. But she's still there. Just she's waiting for the S to hit the fan because this is going to be my go-to S hit the fan knife. And that's Becky, the Becker BK9. Yeah, I don't use it that much in the woods anymore since I've created my own stuff that's a little bit more specifically designed for what I do with knives in the woods, but it's still a great knife. Individually tested, I'll trust 1095 CV. You got to individually test them though, and uh, that one has definitely seen lots of punishment. I have no fears about using this knife in a rough way whatsoever. So those are all the large knives that I have, believe it or not. Okay, now we come to the mid-size knives. So these are generally your, your primary knives, your bushcraft knives, uh, that sort of thing. They're, they're slightly smaller than the big choppers, but they're definitely uh, larger than companion knives. And we just talked about Becky. A lot of people have wondered about Jessica, the original Jessica. Well, the original Jessica is no longer with us. I sacrificed her on the altar of doing the right thing uh, in a fundraiser to help a family out at one point. But I do still have my prized Jessica Prime. And Jessica Prime is a Becker BK7, which as a personal favor to me, has been customized by Pete Kohler at Dark Timber Knives. It has stabilized wood handles that are permanently pinned on and in order to really get the blade to where it needed to be and get all the grind marks out, I mean, he actually had to carefully re-grind the entire blade so that it came out nice and smooth with no lines. So that is my one-of-a-kind, dark timber, customized Becker BK-7. But wait, there is one other one that I still have that I keep, you know, every once in a while, if I need a rough use knife, if, I got, if I'm out in the woods with somebody else that needs something to test out, and that is the Camillus, and that's Jess One. You haven't seen Jess One all that often, but she does exist. So those are the two BK7s that I still have. Next one is pretty much one of the iconic bushcraft knives made by obviously one of my favorite bushcraft knife makers. And this was a limited edition, one of 20, done for Malcolm Coderre, the hidden woodsman that makes all the cool uh, haversacks and packs and stuff. So this is my hidden woodsman edition, LT Wright Genesis. This is just a, an all around simple design, works for just about everyone. Got, you know, if you got it, a collection of LT Wrights, the Genesis definitely needs to be in there somewhere. So I will always have one of these. The next knife is probably my favorite LT Wright knife after my own Jessmic. And you don't normally see these all that often. And that is the Bush Crafter. The Bush Crafter was a big knife back when Blind Horse Knives was around. After the split, and they split into two separate companies, uh, BHK mainly did most of the Bush Crafters, but you can still pick one up uh, now and again. I bought this one from LT last year at Blade Show. It is a little bit smaller than the Genesis. And I love the finger choil, extremely comfortable in the hand. I actually prefer this slightly more than the Genesis. This is just a great knife, and it's also a great EDC fixed blade. Doesn't look threatening, not too big, great for all sorts of uses. I'll save the suspense and cut right into it. I'm going to put these three together. These are my three Moras. I'm sure I probably have some other ones around here somewhere, 
These are the three that I will most likely actually use. The, the 511 Basic has a C2G Fab sheath. I've got a C2G Fab neck sheath for the Moore 2000. And the Bushcraft Black actually rides piggyback on Becky the BK9 sheath. So those two are a pair. I used to also have one on Jessica X's sheath, but Jessica X is already a pound and a half. I just didn't want any more bulk on that sheath. So when I carry Jess X, I, I do it alone. But the Bushcraft Black is generally the budget Bushcraft knife that I recommend to people to, who are just getting started. Uh, learning skills and things like that, but I do like all of them. I I really like the Mora 2000. I like the handle, especially since I have the uh, Ken Onion Work Sharp with the blade grinder, so I was able to put a 90 degree spine on it because the spine it comes with is very rounded. So if you want to do bushcraft stuff with it, you got to put the spine on yourself. But those are the three Moras that I still have in my stockpile. This next one is actually a replacement. Uh, the first one that I had, I gave away to somebody. And I don't use it all that often, but I do like it. And I like the designer. I like it enough that even though I don't use it that often, I don't want to get rid of it. I do keep it. And that is the Schrade SCHF 42 designed by Brian Griffin. And mine has the micarta scales uh, made by Joe Snarsky, LMF knives. And this one actually has a, a yellow hawk sheath to it as well. I know I haven't been showing the sheaths, but when you combine all those factors together in this knife, that's what makes me like this enough to want to keep it. Not so much into the leather sheath that it comes with, but this package, again, this is like one of those ones I would... Uh, lend to somebody I was going out in the woods with but still like it it's a good knife well the next one another really obvious one you're probably wondering where the heck it is and that would be <laughs> my two Jessmix this one's one of a kind for now this is the one that I mainly carry I got one in a yellow hawk sheath one in an LT right sheath my favorite bushcraft knife ever obviously not just because I designed it, but because I designed it to do what I specifically wanted. And when you get exactly what you want, there's no need to really look anywhere else. So there's those two. The last one uh, in my Woods fixed blade is the smallest one, and that is my original JX3 from Dark Timber. Uh, he, he does the custom ones, which, you know, it's kind of hard to get your hands on one of those based on his waiting list. But the LT Wright versions should be available in the somewhat near future. But the JX3, def, obviously I'm not going to get rid of that. I mean, not only is it uh, my, de my design with Pete Kohler, but Pete made it. So, of course I have it. And those are my woods knives those are my fixed blades that i still have so you're probably staring at the screen shocked like wow chris that's really all you got yeah that's really all i got you gotta understand for me this is a business and in order to continue to do it sometimes i have to give things up sell them whatever in order for me to acquire more stuff if I spent every ounce, I'd spend every ounce of my paycheck buying new knives if I didn't do it that way. And there's always going to be somebody out there that's going to appreciate it more, uh, like that knife more, and actually give it some good hard use rather than you just letting it sit on a shelf, hang on a wall, sit in a collection. See, I'm not, I don't consider myself a collector. Uh, I consider myself a user. But I do have those few knives which I just refuse to get rid of and those are it i mean even knives that i've had special you know sometimes i get special sheets made for knives because i want people to see the guys that i know that do kydex work so they get exposure as well because people want to know you know who makes good sheaths so i might do something like buy a becker bk21 have an az welky sheath made for it and then sell it or trade it so i can do other things because i'm not going to use that knife Ever when I've got Jessica X. I use my own knives in the woods 90% of the time. 
The rest of the time is when I'm actually testing something, trying it out for a period, so I can give uh, an educated assessment of the knife in order to keep doing it. So really, that's all I currently have in my stockpile. And as I continue to, uh, to keep making my own knives, the GX4 Bush Bat is in the pipeline, and that one's probably gonna blow your mind. Those are the ones that I wanna keep using because they're specific to my wants and needs and I'm comfortable with them. So you see, a lot of us YouTubers don't have these giant warehouses full of stuff. It's the same with flashlights. I keep certain flash, maybe, you know, maybe someday I'll do a, a video of the flashlights I refuse to get rid of. A lot of those I sell, trade, so on and so forth in order to keep doing videos. But those are my favorites, either because they work that well or they have some sort of uh, sentimental value to me. Not as many as you thought I'd have, is it? So there you go, now you know. I'm Chris from Prepared My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Check the description box below for all the pertinent links. And don't forget, I'm giving away Jessica X in this video. So all you gotta do to enter is leave a comment in the description box or in the comment section below. And next week, I'll use that random uh, YouTube comment picker to select a winner. And then I'll send you a Jessica X out of my personal stash. All right, guys, until next time, see you then.